Hey everybody, this is Josh, the 980 Know-It-All, coming to you tonight for a little 980 baseball talk. Since spring training has officially started, pitchers and catchers are starting to report, it's kind of a holiday for me. I'm going to bring to you nine things I'm looking for this spring training, and even kind of into the early parts of the season to see how things play out. Because you know what? It's baseball, I'm a fan, and I just want to bring you baseball because, well, you know what? We all love the sport. So right off the bat, the very first thing I'm looking for this season, especially in the spring training, is to see which teams can take their success from last year and build on that. I'm looking at the Twins, the Brewers, even the Rockies and the Diamondbacks who really stepped up last year. I want to see if they can build on their success and really make a push deep into the playoffs, and even try for a World Series. Now, I still have the Astros as my favorite to win this year because well, they haven't done anything to prove me that they aren't the favorite. And I still think the Dodgers might be the favorite in the National League, but those teams, like the Brewers, they got better. The Twins, they got a little bit better, not a lot better. The Rockies and the Diamondbacks, they're just dangerous teams. So I'm thinking that to just ignore them would not be a good decision on my part. So I want to see how those teams do, especially early on in spring training. The second thing I'm looking at this spring training is to see how Stanton and Judge work together. I know last year at the Home Run Derby, there's a lot of talk about how they were so similar, big guys hit big home runs, but I'll be honest with you, I think Stanton got kind of tired of talking about it. He got tired of hearing, oh, Judge this and Judge that. And I'm kind of wondering if when he's in New York, he's gonna get tired of it pretty quickly too. Now that may all just go away and people might say, you know what, we've talked about it enough, let's move on and see what they can do. But I think Stanton might get tired of it. Because he's got not only Judge that people are talking about and comparing him to, they've also got Sanchez. So all of those three guys can hit a ton of home runs and hit the ball a long ways. I'm kind of wondering how they work as a team. I'm kind of wondering if they don't get tired of each other. Now, I could be completely wrong, and they may just be like best friends and work out great together and just have just a power hitting lineup. But I'm not so sure. So that's one of the things I'm going to look for this season, especially in the spring training time. The third thing I'm looking at is which teams are going to tank the season. Now, I know it's nothing official. No teams are actually trying to be the worst team in baseball, except the Marlins. I'm going to say the Marlins might be trying to be the worst team in baseball. Once again, if you guys watched my previous shows, I talked about the Marlins a little bit. And I'm sorry for all you Marlins fans. You guys are not going to have a good year. But I want to see what other teams are going to try and tank. I think there's going to be a few teams out there that are just going to try and drop payroll completely, cut what they don't need, and just tank for a season or two in the hopes of trying to rebuild their farm system to be like the Royals or the Cubs or even in some ways the Dodgers with what they've built. But once again, I want to see who tanks. I want to see which teams do that. I already know the Marlins are out there as the front runners for tanking, but I'm guessing there's going to be a few other teams we're going to be caught off guard as we watch them tank the season. Fourth thing I'm watching this spring training, especially going into the new season, is Mike Trout. Let's be honest, he's the best player in baseball. Far and away, the best player in baseball. He is truly a once in a generation player, and I have not gotten to see him play live yet. And so my goal, maybe not this year, but especially within the next two years, is to go watch Mike Trout play. Just so I can say that I got to watch him play. Because he is that good, he's that special. I'm going to try and watch every bit of highlights I can of him this summer. And if I get a chance to go watch an Angels game, I'm going to take it because I want to see him play, see him hit. He is the best player in baseball right now and might be the best player I've ever seen. And just so you guys know, I've watched King Griffey Jr. in his prime and Mike Trout might be better. And that's saying something in my opinion. The fifth thing I'm looking for, Cody Bellinger, Aaron Judge, amazing rookie, rookie seasons, amazing rookie seasons. Can they keep it up? Now, I'm not looking at them to bat 300 and, and hit 55 home runs. They don't have to do that for me to be impressed with them if they keep things going. If they can bat 260, 265, even 270 and still hit 30 plus home runs, I'm going to look at those guys as being legit and being successful. Now, do I think they can do that? 
I think Bellinger can. I think he can get away with things and with his swing and his versatility in the field, he could become a legitimate star. Judge, I think he can be also, but I think he has a greater chance of failing. Just because a part of last season seemed like he just went on a roll and no one really realized it till two months in. This year, I think they're going to attack him differently and he might struggle. Now, once again, sophomores, they always tend to struggle because the league adjusts to them and then it's up for the players to then adjust back to the league to try and get back to where they could be. I think Judge could be great. I also think he could be a guy who bats 175 and hits 35 home runs, which some teams might still sign that. But that's one of the big things I'm looking for this spring training to see how those two guys, how they developed in the offseason and what they're doing going forward. The sixth thing I'm looking for going into this spring training and even into the season is the free agents who are going to be free agents at the end of this season. There are some big names. Harper, Machado, Clayton Kershaw has a chance to be a free agent if he chooses to be. So I want to look and see which of those guys possibly sign extensions and contracts with their current teams before the season ends. I think there might be one or two of them that decide, you know what, free agency sounds great, but I just want to be done, taken care of, and stay with the team I'm at. I can see Kershaw doing that. Probably not Harper, probably not Machado, but you never know. You never know with those guys, especially with the way this year's free agency has been going. It's been a little crazy. I'm not sure if teams are saving money for next year. I don't know if teams just don't want to overspend, which is a real possibility, or if it's the market finally correcting itself to where guys who don't deserve those big, huge contracts aren't getting them now. And it is interesting because you got guys like Hosmer, who is right now still a free agent, and he has contract offers on the table, good ones in my opinion from what I hear, but he's not taking them. He's looking for the big payout. I don't think he's going to get it. I don't think the rest of the free agents this year are going to get it. Which leads us into number seven, and that is the current free agent market. Guys who are still on the market looking for a team. Spring training started today. Spring training is going, and there is still a lot of big names. Big names at every position. Pitchers, infielders, outfielders. If you needed to build a team, you could do it with the free agents that are out there right now. So I'm interested to see which team finally says, you know what, enough is enough. Let's pick some guys up and make a run for the playoffs. I kind of hope my Seattle Mariners will do that with a few of the pitchers. I don't think they will, but it's something I want to hope for, at least dream for. But that's the big question I have is, which free agents right now who are still looking for a team will make the decision to sign whatever's on the table and get into spring training and get into the camps? I don't think it'd be smart of any of those guys to wait until the season starts. I really don't think it's smart for them to wait a month or two into the season. Once they do that, their contract options are going to drop significantly. And they do not, do not want to go into next season, next off season as a free agent because there's going to be a lot of players, a lot of top level talent that will overshadow them and cause them to get an even smaller contract off offer. So the current free agents, they need to sign. They need to sign quick because if they go too much longer, they may be without a team for a long time. Number eight on my list of things I'm watching for, and that's the injury bug. Every season has them. Every once in a while, a team just gets demolished by the injury bug. I know the Mariners last year, their pitching staff was just destroyed. And they had a good offense. They had a good team, but their pitching staff was so hurt, so bad, there was nothing they could do. So I want to see which teams, especially the competitive teams, teams like the Cubs, Dodgers, Yankees, Red Sox, even the Astros, I want to see if they make it through spring training without too many injuries. Because if they get into spring training and a few guys start going down here and there, it could be the difference between making the playoffs and falling just short. So I want to see which injuries and which teams get hit the worst. The ninth thing I'm looking for is to see how my Seattle Mariners do. I love some of the moves they made this offseason. I love bringing D. Gordon into play center field. I think he'll do fine. He's fast enough. 
He's smart enough, athletic enough. Their offense is really dangerous. They've got speed at the top. They've got guys who can get on base and get moving around. They've got pop in the lineup. You know, they've got Cruz, Cano, Seager. Those guys are going to hit. Mitch Hanniger looked really good last year in his rookie season. Zunino started to show that he can actually hit the ball and be more than just a defensive catcher. So there's a lot of talent on that team. I'm interested to see just how they move forward and how they improve this season. Now, they may fall flat in their face because, well, I don't have a lot of faith in their starting pitching. Their bullpen's decent, but if you can't get to the bullpen, it doesn't matter. So I'm interested to see how my Seattle Mariners kind of move forward this season as compared to last year. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the nine things I'm looking for in this spring training and coming into this season for baseball. So I'm excited. This is, this is the best time of the year to so see pitchers and catchers reporting, see players coming in, players signing autographs for, fun, for fans. It's a lot of fun. Now if you do follow us and you watch the, the videos or follow us on Facebook, you know, one thing I want to ask you, and this is kind of a shameless plug, is to consider being a supporter of ours on Patreon. We're trying to get it built up so we can do more stuff, do more features, and even be kind of more of an impact in the baseball and softball community. So in the description below, please check out our Patreon website, go to it, see if there's anything there that you guys might be interested in, in being a supporter for us. Um, but even if you don't, we're just glad you're following us. Check out our Facebook page, our Twitter, our Instagram is up and running, and don't forget to check back later on for all of our YouTube videos. Once again, I'm Josh, the 980 Know-It-All, and this was 980 Baseball Talk. Catch you later.